We're going to go ahead and open with a prayer. We have quite a bit to do today uh, to finish this. Next week, Sunday, is Mother's Day, so we, uh, uh, we're, we're not going to probably uh, hold up everybody for a long time. And I'm going out of town um, pretty soon after that. Well, maybe not Monday, because Herb and I are going to Mexico. Like, no, we're going to Mexico this time. We open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us your word, for giving us hearts of faith, not giving us a religion like a work, the world law and all of that, but giving us clear minds and clear hearts to know your son and to recognize your son in the gifts that you promise to give us, uh, Jesus baptism, Jesus in the Lord's Supper, and uh, help us study the various different groups that are allowing the devil to steal your power from all of those things. Give us clear minds and hearts to study this topic, trusting Jesus' holy name. Amen. So we uh, started this, well, about six weeks ago. We, we missed uh, one or two Sundays, but it's real important that we understand, just like we talked about in the sermon, that what we have been studying is where the devil has caused so many people. He has deceived the people and has caused them to be following a religion, something based on their own decision. That was the first one, decision theology. The rapture, well, the, the rapture was the first one. That, again, caused people to look at themselves to wonder if they've done enough themselves to get ready. Then the Jehovah Witnesses uh, and um, the I Decide Theology group. And then last week we talked about the, the different Holy Spirit that the devil has caused people in actual Christian churches to have this spirit that is is wild it's not and the Holy Spirit. it's not the Holy Spirit I mean I look at the Bible and what does it say oh I'm sorry Herb you got to alt tab to the next page I'm sorry oh. if you have questions or anything you can send them to that phone number but today just all tab. Okay. I think it'll just go to it. Yeah. Okay. Today we. <laughs> what did you hit? I didn't hit anything. Well, hit the escape key. Escape. Or just click on the white over there. Turn it off now. No, click on the white right there. No. Just click on the white, Herb. And the black will slide away. And it'll go away. Anywhere no, no, the no, 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 on the, the left. white. Off the left, yeah, there you go, there you go. Okay, and you also page, so page down now. Arrow down. No, you went the wrong way. I think you went two down. No. Uh, up, I think it's up. There, all right, okay. We, uh, a few, there were some questions after our study last week about um, exactly kind of to have a study of the Holy Spirit and we can do that um, I'll be out of town a few weeks after um, um, Mother's Day and then the next two Sundays I won't be here so we uh, will consider setting up a study so you really understand the actual work of the Holy Spirit but today you saw in that one lesson God appeared to Paul, well, Saul, who became Paul. What happened when uh, the, the man laid his hands on him? Did you see him roll around on the thing and get all, all no. kind of wild? No. The, the scales on his eyes fell off and he could see. You know, when the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, 
Which one do you see when these churches are wild doing all this stuff? Do you see the fruit of the Spirit? Notice that. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Not rolling around like you can't control yourself. Not wild like you can't control yourself. You know, this is what the Bible says will be the things that you will see when the person has the Holy Spirit. Page down. Um, in that same area, the acts of the flesh, the sinful uh, acts of the flesh are all, I mean, these, these fits of rage and selfish ambition and um, envy, pride, all these things are from the flesh, not the spirit. And people need to realize there's a big difference between. And it just seems like, I'm sorry, but like I said, recognizing Jesus in the sermon, you recognize the Holy Spirit in the way that God has set up the, uh, the things to happen in connection to the Holy Spirit, not in connection to what seems to be kind of a, a, the, the way the world religion would do things. Or what they think. Or what they think. It's a... I'm, when, when the devil steals God's power, the devil also corrupts the things that God's doing. So when, when he pours out the Holy Spirit, it's not like this. You look at every place that somebody in the Bible receives the Holy Spirit. Every one. Not, not just some of them, but every one of the events of the Holy Spirit touching somebody's life. You do not see these kind of activities like in this second pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And you cannot find that in the Bible also. The Holy Spirit, God poured it one time. And then when, when the Holy Spirit causes faith in somebody, it's not like that. Not one example in the Bible like that for the Holy Spirit. The only examples like that are the activities of the devil in people. So it's, it's be, you know, it's a, it's a separate kind of a thing, and I'm sorry, it's a world spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. Those aren't the fruits of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you have something? Did you? No? Oh. Okay. Fac factions. Factions are, well, they're different, different groups against groups. You kind of fuss with one another as a different group. No, this this isn't this isn't everything, but this is the list that Paul puts down in Galatians 5, right above the fruit of the Spirit. Those are verses, and the next verses talk about the fruit of the Spirit, which we recently read. Love, joy, peace. Peace. That is a peace, peace. I have one question. We're, we're letting we're letting Dan exercise his his knee. Yeah, come over here. There's a friend. He goes to a Christian church, and we talk about things. But I, when he missed his work on Sunday, I said, "Don't you receive the Lord? Don't you feel better?" And he looked at me like, "What are you talking about? Is it true Christian church don't receive Lord's Supper?" Because you seen what the sermon is uh, this morning or the lesson talked about Jesus said, go out and put your net on the right side. And later he gave them bread and fish and they ate and they recognized Jesus. But if you don't receive Lord's Supper, how do you recognize him? Okay, all right. That's okay. a spirit. Uh, 
different foods. Okay. Uh, the problem that we see in connection to all of this stuff we have been studying is the difference between a world religion, and that's what I was talking about in the sermon, the world religion that the devil is causing to creep into many Christian churches. And that's why you see the, the Holy Spirit, this spirit, their Holy Spirit. It's really, it's really the devil replacing the Holy Spirit. When the, when the, the rapture groups, when they, when they wrongly teach the meaning of some of the, the Greek words, well, who would do that, God? No. The devil wants to cause those errors to appear in those Christian churches. We are not talking against one group or another one, but we, we see the truth, and then we pray that God will wake them up. That's the last thing I'll say today as we go through this. The point is not to criticize some group. The point is so you do not become Marty. Uh, one place or another, uh, Laura can't see. <laughs> all of a sudden, Marty was between. I could see. I couldn't see you. All of a sudden, um, uh, all of us. We we don't want you to join with this world, the devil religion. You do not have a religion. This it, it's like if this was oranges and our faith was an apple. Those two are different. You cannot use the same word religion to define this and define this. We do not have a religion. It is so important. Religions are based on the law and their people invented things. God's faith is his revealed word that caused us to believe. Or um, when when Jesus breathed on those apostles, you didn't see them all of a sudden slain in the spirit, or you didn't see them rolling around and all wild. They sat there, and Jesus said, peace to you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit causes. When ourselves, we see sin and do our own thing, and when the Holy Spirit touches us with God's word, all of a sudden, what do we have? We have no peace over here. All of a sudden, we have peace knowing Jesus as Savior. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So it's real important that what we are seeing in these last days are people that are chucking, and, and that's, what, that's what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. All of these things that young, well, not just young people, but everybody in the last days are focused on these things. And one of the things that it says, now in a new translation, it says having the form of godliness. But when you look at the old translations and you look, you look at the meaning of those words, having which would fit better with what you see happening, having the form or the symbols of religion but but denying the power of that and that's what you see in connection to your question when when people now feel that the symbol of the lord's supper is only a symbol and has no power it's a form of our faith our faith sees the power connected to the Lord's Supper. When they don't have that, it's because this group is haven't realized that by their decision, they have decided that the Lord's Supper doesn't have any power, that the Lord's Supper doesn't give anything, that the Lord's Supper really is not Jesus' true body and true blood. And that, sadly, Pray for your friend, because the group that he's a he's a nice guy, 
And the church that he belonged to was never like that before. When they started doing this rapture thing and they started doing this I decide thing, all new things. And when those churches decide to do that, they are denying God himself and his power. They're saying the power belongs to them. And that's the danger. That's what we want people to realize and understand. Because it's very important. Constance? Where do people get the idea that it's just a symbol? Good question. Well, no, it's a, it's a good question. When, when one, of the, one of the verses that I quoted in the Bible this morning in the sermon was, uh, you know, Martin Luther said, when Jesus said, this is, and the Greek has the is there. Often it doesn't. But the is is there, my body. And then Jesus says, I think it's in Luke, but it's one of them. This is my blood, the blood being shed. That's going to happen tomorrow for Jesus, I mean. You would understand, this was Thursday night. And he says, that blood being shed. He's talking about what's happening on the cross tomorrow. And yet, for God, he can sit there and do it today on Thursday night. But it's real important, you see, they ignore that. Because in themselves, Constance, they, their reason can't figure it out. They depend on human reason, and it causes them to believe lies and to follow lies. I'm sorry, that's what we see happening in these last days. That's why I keep bringing up that these are new teachings in the 1800s. It's, it's coming near the last days of life on earth. And people are following all this stuff. And it's very dangerous. We started the whole study with what verse? A group of people saying, Jesus, Lord, Lord, we did. See, that's the law. We did this, and we did this, and we did... That's the verse we started with. And what did Jesus answer them? Depart from me, I never knew you. See, they, they were doing a different Jesus. And that's the danger. That's what the devil does. When we depend on our own decision, or our own power, or our own wisdom, we are, we are building on sand. And the storm that comes, it's not going to support that house. Dan, you have something? One more. And I think it's very important. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, many people who look at things that simple. Think about all the doctors, all the pictures. Uh, they are even looking for a... Uh, uh, Picture. Things they can do themselves. But even the, some people look at the Lord's Temple as a temple and baptism. Oh, just water. Oh, it's bread and wine. Okay, I'll just come with this. Me and myself would do better. But we see baptism and Lord's Temple as, yeah, bread and wine and wash, but with, remember, Jesus said, go do in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, how in these two. Now, um, now it's very important when he said, it's very important. When, when Paul talks about receiving the Lord's Supper in a wrong way. Yeah. What does Paul say that that person can receive? <clears throat> Eternal judgment against them. 
glad for you. I don't mean I don't mean to point at you. No, <laughs> you know I realized my finger was pointing right at Con uh, Constance. No, you brought up the symbol thing, and so understand if that was only a symbol, and that was all, you couldn't receive it in a wrong way. And God isn't going to punish you for receiving just a symbol in a wrong way. God doesn't do that. I remember you said that uh, Jesus said, depart from me. I don't know you because you gave the symbol. Right. No power with God in them. You have a religion. And when you have a religion, you're doing it yourself. All world religions are based on the law, doing it ourselves. We're not going to get done with this, by the way. And that's fine. All, no, no, don't be sorry. All, you, you see who's talking now, you know. All world, all, oh no, it's connected. All, I'm going to finish the sentence. All world religion. You know, it's like, it's like I have a stutter. Now I'm going to have to do it again. All world religions are based on the law like I said that is so important they're doing themselves to try to get back to God themselves and that steals his power to save them faith is what we have and it's God's gracious gift it has nothing to do with my works or your works and he did it all and that is the difference between these two sides. Uh, Lois and then Constance again, well, I Lois. Just, I just wanted to say that many of these people are, are, are they truly, you know, believe that Jesus is their savior. They know it's only through Jesus. And so maybe they have these other things, they're kind of confused, but um, many of those people, you know, will go to heaven with God. That is our prayer. Because his, his work wants to defeat that. That's the danger that I'm trying to help us understand. Not to talk against somebody that's going to this one or this one or this one. That's not the point. Before the 1800s, all of these had Jesus alone as Savior. You didn't have I decide and I did and, and rapture this and wrong teaching that. That's all new stuff, including the Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons. And so many are going into that. So our prayer is that people wake up and realize God, what God's word is saying. That it isn't their decision. God decided to save them. I mean, the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear with that. Constance? So... You mentioned the law. It's all right not to have the law. No, you mentioned the law. So, but is it what humanity has made? Or is it the Ten Commandments? What's the Ten Commandments? That, the, that society had decided to make up and be like, oh, or are they the Ten Commandments? Which? Is that your question? Is it which? See, now, did the Ten Commandments succeed saving you and me? No. Nope. They're God's law. But is it? And, and it did not succeed able to save us. It required Jesus to come and do all the law perfectly. So even God's law is, is like us trying to do it better and it, it, it we will fail every time and sin so, but when you mention quote the law unquote is it God's law or humanity's law yes but which one all <clears throat> all the laws because understand these people in these religions over here are looking at God's Ten Commandments and say, oh, well, we have to do this and this and this and this and this and this, and we and God will accept it. No. Yes, it's God's law, but we cannot do this, 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 and save us. It's impossible. It does not, it won't happen. 
And that's the, that's the major difficulty because they think, well, God gave us this law. And then there are people laws also that have been invented. Many, many, many laws that people try to follow. And they will fail in that too. That will never be perfect enough that God's going to accept them. And I'm sorry. And people do not realize that the devil is deceiving them and leading them to begin to follow a law. And that's the reason when, when I quoted Matthew, Matthew chapter 7 to begin this study, when it says people on the last day will come and say, Lord, Lord, we did and we did. See, those, they all of a sudden, they know Jesus, they know him as Lord, and yet we did, they became their own Lord. They became their own God. They decided what they had to do to save themselves. And that's the reason they were doing or following a different Jesus. Because he, Jesus himself, said, depart. I never knew you. Never knew. Never knew you. Yes, but... They, or from beginning to end, never knew them. But they cannot save themselves. They cannot save themselves, but they, they don't even realize they now are trying. That's the problem. The devil, it's why we call this deceive. The devil is deceiving them to think they can. And sorry, they can't. Many years ago, their church would never suggest I decide. Would never, never decide rapture. And now they're doing that. And so the devil is slowly leading the group astray. He wants them fully astray. And, and he is able to deceive them. That's the problem. That's the situation. That we don't want to happen against them. Marty? We come with a book of instruction, which we as sinners do not and cannot follow. Um, Jesus covers sinners. Inside Jesus' covering of me is a 100% sinner. When God looks and sees Jesus covering me, he sees a 100% holy person because he sees Jesus. So don't misunderstand. We are sinners from beginning <coughs> to end until Jesus comes again. And we're sorry, and we repent. We don't want to do sin, but sometimes we, we do. I mean, the, <laughs> you know, after, after I signed sometimes, I thought, oh, I shouldn't have signed sometime. And, and Dan said, all the time. Yeah, see? <laughs> he knows. Um, so anyway, page down for me. Okay. All right, you're there. That's fine. We'll stop there. Uh, when uh, there was one more page that when God poured out the Holy Spirit, but I talked about a uh, page up one for me. Um, you know, uh, we are not talking against one church or another one. We're not. We are praying that the churches wake up and see the errors and that they understand that the devil, right here, have clear minds and continue to watch. I, I gotta go back to it so I can look here. Continue to watch. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone that he can devour. He is not doing that to just let them go. Oh, be friends, happy. No, to devour. So just have clear minds. That's our prayer. That 
in these last days that we see all this happening, that you continue with clear minds, continuing to watch the true Jesus, not believing all this trash. Okay, page down. Uh, we got 15 minutes. So uh, this is the last one we're going to do. It's the last really kind of new theology since the 1800s. Uh, so uh, in the Mormons, it started in 18, I mean, uh, uh, Joseph Smith was born in the 1820s, but he started it, I think it was 1856 or something. I can't remember exactly. Maybe it was 1820. It's been a long time. Okay. The, the Mormons believe the Arctic, their third article of faith we believe that through Christ's atonement, he took away sins, all people, he can save all people. How? The people obeying the gospel, the gospel itself has laws and ordinances that you have to obey. Is, does the gospel, is the gospel a law that we have to follow and obey? We recently, with our discussion, saw the answer, right? Okay, page down. When we read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, we will notice that uh, those that don't know God and um, do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it seems to me, I mean, I could read the whole thing. It, it seems to me that we have a Bible verse that says the same thing. That the, the gospel has a law that we have to follow. And I, I put do not know God because knowing God requires the Holy Spirit and is a faith thing. Therefore, this person uh, follows and does the will of his, his Father in heaven, but they, they're, not, they're not doing the gospel. The gospel uh, is where Jesus himself did it all. See, so now the people follow the things that Jesus showed us and to serve, uh, like Jesus said, when he washed the disciples' feet. The thing that I've done for you, go and do the same. See, that's a command. When, when, when Jesus commands the Lord's Supper to receive that, that's a command. That is kind of like doing gospel commands, but we're not doing those things to save us. Jesus finished saving us. See, that's the difference. For Mormons, they're doing these things to save themselves. For us, we are doing these things in service to God. And many of them are commands, but they're not, but they do not mean the gospel itself is a law. It does not mean that. Page down. Uh, three important verses that we need to understand. God has destined, in the future destined us, not for, for wrath, but to receive his salvation, trusting our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses uh, 8 and 9, it's God's grace that gives faith, that saves. Faith is not your own doing. Faith is God's gift. Faith is not your works, therefore you, no one can boast. Page down. Tyler. I'm sorry. Tyler. That last one you Page said. back up. The last one you said, can I come up here? Now? Yeah, Ephesians. Oh, I can sign for you. Okay. Uh, faith is not your own doing. Faith, faith is God's gift. I understand that. It's God's gift. Faith is not just faith alone. But faith is doing too. So that's not a law. Right? 
Well, faith, faith that saves you has nothing to do with you doing. But it's him doing. Him doing. Okay. But now, <clears throat> after him doing, you do. Well, because you belong to him. Yes. Uh, That's the kind of word I'm trying see, to See, faith has two parts, believe and trust. Those two parts are action words, and they come out without those two parts, faith, believe, and trust, without those two things coming out, this faith is dead. They're, they're saying faith, 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 but they don't have the actions. And there are other actions. Following, coming, and receiving the Lord's Supper. That is a command. Now, we do that, that's a law. We do that not to save ourselves, but to follow Jesus. Okay. See, he commands the things that he wants us to be doing. When we baptize somebody, it's God's command that we do that. But our doing that does not accomplish his work. He has already accomplished his work. We're just doing exactly what he commanded us to do. Right. And that our doing doesn't save us. Okay. If we refuse to do that, that would be a sin. Yeah. But that sin doesn't condemn us because Jesus died to save us. He did it all. It's really important. Laura? Yeah. <laughs> I answered you. Yeah, well, it, it's real important that you keep the law separate from the gospel. Yeah, that's right. They are two different things. And a good teacher always keeps them separate. How do you confuse them? Well, see, over here now, in many of these groups, they say, you have to believe more. You have to trust more. And my answer is baloney. Faith has trust in it. It's God doing that in me. And if I have to do it more to save myself, what, to save myself? No. If I have to do it more, my faith is built on sand and it'll collapse because I'm doing it. So it's the Holy Spirit dies in us. That's the faith in us. That means that to do the command. Yes. Okay. You got it. You got it. I mean, it's it's real. It's very important. Okay, page down. Um, so, uh, when Timothy 2, verses 3 to 4, the Savior wants to save all. I wish I had a pointer. All people. Not some. When Jesus died on the cross... He died to save all. Before he made the world, he chose all in him. Not some. And it's real important that um, we understand that God loves them and wants to save them too. Complete astray people. Okay? He wants them to know the truth. And that's the point that we're trying to help you understand clearly. There is a truth. And his, his truth, see that, is a lie. Always. To know his truth is always straight and exact. Truth is like that. His truth is, he twists it. And that's what's happening in these last days. And that's the difficult part. Okay. Um, page down. We're going to... We, all right, it's, it's very important that doing the Father's will, that does not save us. <laughs> the Father's will and choice saves us. And that causes us to be able to do His will and serve others. And can I add one more thing? You want to yes. add one more thing to this very exact perfect sentence? No. <laughs> um, I was going to say is that uh, Jesus wants want to save all. 
But remember, Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you think about all the people that are following themselves. Yeah, yeah. And when, when Jesus, um, remember, Jesus could see God the Father all the time until he became sin. And all of a sudden, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay. Before that, so when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, in his sight, was you, were you and me too? All of them. All of them. From the beginning to the end. Because he is God also. So it wasn't just some of them. It was all of them. Page down. Okay, it's real important that Mormons believe in a Godhead of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mormons believe in that. But they are three separate ones uh, joined together in a united, uh, united activity. Okay? God has a body just like you and I. God has a body. And he had, he had to have a body or he couldn't live forever. Now, they have a little bit of a difficulty with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit doesn't have a body. But we'll ignore that one. But anyway, uh, so, so what happens when a person dies and his spirit prepares itself to enter heaven? When his spirit is ready, he goes and lives before God forever. So, they're doing now, and later they're doing, to get ready to go. Who would invent a religion like that? The devil. It's a religion without hell. He doesn't want you to think you're going to hell. Okay? And also, who would... A page down, I'm sorry. Also, who would invent that as man now is God before was like that and as God now is you can become who would invent that Satan guess, guess where he gets that he knows Eve that if you eat this tree, you will become like God. That really is a stretch of that verse, but that's where he gets it. Um, God the Father made a spirit for Jesus. And that spirit entered Jesus' holy body so Jesus himself is not God's eternal word, no, but he got a body just like any other spirit person. See, God created all of these spirit ones and then made bodies for them here. And then this, that spirit comes here. Well, Jesus had his body and the spirit that God the Father made for him then entered that body here. Okay. Um, remember that if, Je that if Jesus was not true God, then one couldn't accept all sin and one death couldn't save all. He also had to be true God, must be. Um, Mormons believe that their works save that their works save them and that it that it and it's an okay way to understand things. And like you see I added there, sick. Okay. Um, page down. Um, Mormons teach that faith believes God's salvation plan 
that Jesus' sacrifice paid for man's sin debt. So now, by man's actions, they can become perfect and return back to God. Jesus covers all sins before becoming a Mormon. After that, oh, oh, bad to be you. Um, you are responsible for your own sins. And in fact, even Joseph Smith wanted somebody to shoot him, to shed his own blood, to cover all of his own sins since he became a Mormon. And that happened. So, so they really would prefer, I guess, somebody slit the throat or something to cause your own blood to be shed so you cover all of your own sins ever since, ever since the day you became a Mormon. Talk about sick. Um, Mormons have many, many secret services, and most of those services use symbols that are devil symbols have been for all the way along. Now the people don't realize that, but it's the truth. Go, uh, goat heads and, and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's, it, again, sick. Okay. The devil himself did an important thing, causing Adam and Eve to sin. Why? Because God gives life to all of the spirit children and then they can live forever. Without that, the spirit children would never become human. So again, we have studied five different groups, and we actually are gonna get done today. Five different groups, and with each one, I want you to remember that the false prophets are wolves in sheep's clothing. Page down. Um, Paul in 2 Corinthians said, Men like these are false apostles, lying workers, um, hiding themselves like they are Christ's apostles. They do just as Satan does, hiding himself, even appearing as an angel of light. So it's no surprise that his servants also hide themselves as servants like they are doing righteous things. Their end will agree with their actions. You know, that, that, that scares me as a pastor. It should scare all of them because there are false apostles, they are doing their own thing, and Paul makes it very clear Wolves in sheep's clothing, they hide their actions, they hide their false teaching. Um, we did this study to, so you will know these things and recognize that. And also it is our prayer that God wakes up these people at the last days that are going off on all this stuff, all this false stuff. That is it. That's the end of the study. Any other questions today? I, I'm surprised that we got finished. I know I kind of... Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> well, we did pretty fast. Well, I hope and pray, and we will, we will close with a prayer. I just hope and pray that, these, that Mormons realize, Jehovah Witnesses real, realize, rapture people realize, uh, I decide people realize, and this other spirit, this activity here in this world, this, this lying spirit, these people realize the mistakes, the mistake of teaching that they're following, because it's all wrong. So we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for members that uh, study your word, and I ask you to keep their minds clear and hearts clear to follow you. Help them always recognize your faith symbols, have your power connected to them, and accomplish your work. Help them encourage people that, that they know 
that are going off on these other things. Help them use some of the things that they have learned in this study to help them realize their mistakes. <coughs> Bless us now. Bless the council as we do the business of the church. Bless us as your people as we go home and bring us home safely. We pray, trusting Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> <sighs>